Hello there, everybody, and welcome back. This is going to be episode 8 of Koganaros, the fortress by the sea, meant to connect the continents together. Today we will set up the foundation for the courtyard here, I will prepare the blocks, I will consider where we store these, set up the work orders and all things in between necessary. I also hope that while time passes today we will finally get some extra working hands here because the population of 23 dwarves here is struggling with getting all the necessary work done. I have big ambitions but I don't have enough working hands so this will hopefully change soon. We're currently melting our first gold and iron bars in a larger scale and therefore this place is ought to thrive. So that all being said I just want to give a quick pointer towards PayPal, Patreon and buy me a coffee. The links are in the description box and I'd be more than delighted if you check them out if you want to support this channel directly. I'd be more than happy about that because I'm a single content creator, I have no big sponsorships behind me except you fine people. And I'm very very grateful for that. And now enough of the ads, let's get rolling. So we're going to set up first off work orders for that. Just like I have work orders for the rock salt blocks, we're going to set up the same thing now for the gabbro blocks. That's just the same thing. And the only difference here will be the quantities. With the rock salt, I was okay with 100 blocks. This makes no sense for what we're up to. So we're actually going to go and refine these forever. Yes, this is a bit, little bit stupid from my side, you might think, but we're going to wait most of the time for fresh blocks to be made. So let's see how well that works or not. We'll, we got to adapt to our plans after all. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw up a storage stockpile zone for these stone, uh, for these blocks here. And we can define that absolutely exactly that only gap row and i'm going to add that already in advance that fillite is also something we're accepting here so this is all i think we need to do and now all the gap row blocks being made should be transported here so we can now use them for the sake of our fortress and now well it's going to be a really really huge endeavor we have to seal this entire place here i want to get started with the basement i figured that this area here I will train my dwarves here i will make my military live here so that this entrance is not badly defended at all. It's going to be tough as nails to get to that entrance in the first place. So usually I do my defense systems underground, but I figured that this is a nice change of things and I always like to do something different from time to time. I hope you guys can uh, can relate to that. Besides that, of course, our adventures down here in the deeper layers did not end. I am still going to go for these probings i mean at some point we ought to hit some sort of cavern i mean it could be very much the case that i am breaching going to breach into the third uh, second or third layer of the caverns already because i am really very very deep by now i'm frankly said still surprised that we managed to avoid the caverns altogether still but whatever it's not that much of a big problem it's just a little bit annoying that i still have my animals pastured out here which is less than ideal and we have a new artifact in the making as it seems so let's see if we can guide our friend through the process artifacts are not only something that is endangering the life of your dwarves. They also produce history for your fortress and I'm always super happy to have them happening because usually you get either an a insight about the past or an insight about what is uh, going on on the insides of your dwarf. Either way, I really found find it always very, very amusing. All right, so Bone. I, I bet that we don't have Bone for this fine fellow. So Bone is acquirable when we slaughter something. So let's see, what am I able to slaughter actually? So I have no fitting pair. 
anything? Jeez. We got to uh, get something done here. And uh, the boar ready for slaughter? Wait a sec. So, well, let's see. Seems like I need to configure my butcher's um, place properly. Or do I? Now I'm confused. So. Why did that get cancelled? Needs butcherable on rotten nearby item. But, uh... Shouldn't we be able to pick up that piggy then? This looks a little bit bugged to me, so we're going to pick that one up. And since I have two stray yak cows, this should be actually doable. So, ah, now I see what the issue was. It was a global undefined job and therefore it didn't trigger. <clears throat> All right. The job is already in, in the process, so I think this should get the guy into motion. Yeah, there he's, uh, there he's already strolling. Wonderful. Okay, so stacked leather and skeletons. So let's see. I would assume that he's needing more bone. So let's try that. More often than not, they need a double dosage of that. Why is it pink, though? And it's not being properly processed. Whatever. I got other things uh, to think about. It's a bit problematic, though, for me to see that I don't have any um, breeding pairs of animals here. Okay. Now I'm a little bit confused. Why is that one thing being uh, instantaneously going in and the other things not? Come on, guys, it's a matter of life and death. I can only assume that currently somebody's not taking his uh, job seriously enough. But uh, usually we can alleviate that by a little trick that we only put selected people on this job. And usually the job should have been issued. What is happening here? Why can't I order the slaughter of these animals properly? I'm very confused about that because this shouldn't be happening. So let's see. I'm going to issue here a, a crazy... Yeah, okay, there we go stray cow. I don't know why the other jobs had such issues being processed. Let me know if you know. But I want my friend here not to die. Thank you. Also, I totally need to do this again, because otherwise chaos will ensue. These ingredients need to be taken away. So there we go. Just like I thought, he just needed a double dosage of bone. Not uh, necessarily the first time that we got that. So what did we get here? Amethyst? And it looks like we're Heliodor. Jeez. Nice. So we're, uh, we're receiving treasures after treasures. And we're now digging into diorite. So I really hope that I, I wasn't uh, picking up the wrong stone with a gabbro. But, well, usually my typical experiences were that with the deep mo deepest layers that... Bismuth! Jeez, that's rare. That with the deepest layers, I 
hit something like Gabbro like most of the time. But it, I mean, it really depends on your biome and the end. You cannot really say for sure what it's uh, what's going to be in the box. So here, just casually issuing these jobs and hoping that someday soon they'll tell me that they finally found something. A magnetized weapon rack. That is amazing. So we actually got off quite lucky with that one. This one will make one nobleman one day very, very happy. So the ascension of Momus straps shoots to the Queen of the Towers of Age 116. That's really nice. I mean, at the end of the day, this is a thing depicting a monarch picking up his uh, her throne. It's a pretty classy piece for for that. Appreciate that. Okay, so let's see. There's still some coke beans stored here, and generally said. Well, there's more bars here than there should, but I know why that happened. Atalob. We have an artifact here? Jeez, guys. I think the place to store artifacts at. So... Iron bars. What's going wrong here? So... We got to get something done here, so... This workshop shall take items from up here. With this little configuration, I can make sure that the bars that belong in here will be transported down there. I mean, at the end of the day, it is still the same problem that I keep talking about. We don't have the necessary people here to get all the stuff done that I'm ordering. You know, we are currently cutting these Gabro blocks. But, you know, there's just so much work to be done. Also, what's happening with the bins? Yeah, well, okay, the job's still around. Good. So, I figured that maybe we want a second carpenter, just in case, in advance. It always is nice when you have them before you actually need them. And let's do, as a very first thing, a small area of ground where I can put the trade depot ad. So we're going to put up new filters. We need Gabbro and I think we need to turn off the rock salt which is still a preference. There we go. So now all the pieces of floor that I'm ordering will be Gabbro and we're going to seal off this place. This also reminds me of something. We still require a water source. This is another day's topic. I'm not going to dig it out today, but I already got the plan that we're going to dig ourselves a nice and nifty little, um, what's it called again, a uh, cistern down there, because we got so much aquiferous rock, we can't do something out of that, you know. So I want to get myself another hatch cover done. That was on uh, my mind and distracting me the whole time because well, no hatch cover, no fun. Basically, we need that to get our irrigation down because that's really important. <clears throat> All right. Oh yeah, there's another case of doors missing and this meeting area hasn't been defined yet. Very important that we do that. It would be a waste of opportunity. So I think we haven't had a temple for Nashas yet. So let's see. Stetat, Erdem, Ukar, Nashas. So these are the most important gods and goddesses that we need to take care of. Brilliant. Okay. So, the first few bricks are being laid out. I love this moment. We should, we should probably consider laying out some patterns at some point later down the road. That would be pretty amazing too. But you can already see here some things don't work out as intended. But that's mainly because we are just lacking hands. 
the, the amount of dwarves. It's, it's always the same with my with my fortresses. I have much, much bigger plans and anticipations than I have dwarves early on. But at least we have a stable economy. Everything is working out just as I want it to. And I think another little thing that we can do, let's kick the easy meals off the table and make that lavish meals. So we also have to take care soon of another little nuisance. And that is... Oh, wait a sec. I shouldn't make one lavish meals um let's make that 500 and that is no i forgot about it again ah uh, yeah clothing no i uh, got it so let's see we got here let's see control oh we can sort these can't we according to shops so we are processing plants. That's good. That means we are currently already producing fabrics. The really nasty part here is that to make it really effective, we need all these things. So my personal ap approach looks like this. We're just going to add everything cloth here into the uh, work order. And let me know if you have a better method of doing this. Oh, I should pause the game during that. So let's see. Love, dress, hood. Loincloth technology. The funny part is that sometimes they have thongs instead of cloth, uh, loincloth. It's a difference in technology. So I'm adding every object here into the order. Oh, rope is also very uh, nice to have. And then I'm configuring it in a way that I'm telling them that we should always have some of these at our disposal. This way, whenever a dwarf picks up a new item, it will get um, replaced this way. It has its weaknesses, but, you know. So for the cloth bags, we're going to make sure that we always have at least five of these guys available. And with clothing, I like to make it like that. I want to have at least three caps. And I want to have at least 10 unused pieces of cloth because I don't want the clothing industry to eat up all my cloth because you know how needy artifact dwarves are. I mean, most of the time they don't need that many uh, um, dosages of something, but I've seen wild records of especially cloth being picked up by moody dwarves in exuberant amounts. I don't know if this has been a, a bug or if cloth is just one of those materials that can sometimes be picked up in stupidly uh, high amounts. Let me know if you know. I just know that I've had it several times that like uh, they picked up a pile of six cloth or something like that. And therefore I started to like to have this type of uh, stockpile and yeah this is uh, oh yeah chain is very important as well but we only need two of these and we don't need that one here so rope well I have this uh, quite uh, often on my tab but not to have it uh, in large amounts because usually I prefer metal chains and this is mostly for the sake of building fountains and traction benches and such it's really useful to have that. Okay, finally did it. I hate that part, honestly. But, you know, it's a necessary evil. And with DF hack, you can actually get yourself this uh, job done more easily by just um, saving the template. And then you can just reload it. That's one nice thing to know. All right, so we're slow uh, poke building that hatch stuff. And let's see, yeah, it literally takes forever for anything to get done because currently not the haulers are not even able to get the blocks over into the storage. Currently they're taking the blocks from the stonecutter's workshop and transport them above ground. But whatever, it gets the job done sooner or later. Later we will be more efficient when the blocks being transported up here, but for today that's where we where we were, how we work, and uh, I think that's uh, pretty okay. 
Now then, we got to get ourselves some mechanics down because I want to crank up the cloth production a little bit more. This is just not enough. We need way more than that. So, the other hatch goes on here. And we're going to plant another lever right into the middle of nowhere. Because, you know, it's just a one-time uh, usage. Actually, I could uh, rip them out of the ground after I've ever done. But, you know. I love to keep my machinery intact as a reminder of uh, days past. There we go. So as you see, my planter is a very busy man, but he's already a grandmaster planter. This is uh, giving increasing the yield of these fields quite tremendously. Therefore, it's really worth the effort. Oh boy, it really shows that we don't have enough workers by now. I am quite unhappy about that in all honesty, but you know, it is as it is. So let's see, is there any animal endangered here? No, they're not. Great. So this will take much longer than I uh, like it to take, but you know, I have l loaded the uh, fortress up with more work orders than they can probably fulfill. But at the same time, I'm quite happy that we've got all that down by now. Basic fundamentals of this fortress are fulfilled. We are still ever venturing forth and deeper. I mean, what's not to like about all that? But I'm still a little bit shocked that I haven't struck any caverns whatsoever. This is mind boggling. I would have assumed that by now I should have found something. But nope. Not this time, Eurist. So we have a lot of pigtail cloth to work with, that's good. Before we know it, this place will be overworked like crazy. One clothier's shop cannot fulfill the tasks of one entire fortress in a longer period of time, especially when your dwarves will throw off their old clothing and require new clothing. This can set off a spiral of unhappiness, so... An elven caravan? Yuck. These, what, what do these people want here? Ah, buying my gemstones. That's what they want. All right, you foolish long ears. I mean, after all, I don't know what we should be uh, doing with these. Roleplay-wise, they aren't our best friends. But realistically, they got something that we need. And that's food. Although we don't need the food that badly. By now, I think we're pretty autonomous, actually. But I always like to trade for the food variety. It's making people just outright happier. And that's always a good thing. Alright. My broker is a very busy man, obviously. He's more busy making Gabbro blocks than anything else, but that's okay. I'm very happy that we're starting to plaster this place. What impression must these elven traders have that, meanwhile, our dwarves are busy sealing the, the ground with stones? <laughs> well, not my problem. I like to buy from the elves the uh, greens that they sell, because at the end of the day, this is really good stuff. And gemstones, you can trade with the elves without any problems. They don't mind you doing this. They're just crazy costly, but whatever. We're not going to give any gifts to elves, though. Nuh-uh. So be happy that we had a gemstone for your friends. I think that's a very, very generous gesture from me. Alright, so the clothing is being made, and now if somebody has a tattered piece of clothing, he can't pick it up. I just have forgotten one very important thing, and that is a general supply place for these things. So, since my clothiers are... Ah, well, it shouldn't be here. Come on. Let's, let's give it a proper room here. So, this is the Gabbro storage, so we're going to go here 
put up the storage for cloth. And I think it was stupid like that, wasn't it? No, no, no. Cloth has, has its own uh, category. So cloth goes on here and finished goods, clothing go on here. I think it was finished goods, right? Yeah, oh boy, it's... Ah, right. Nothing's easy here, so... Um, we need, of course, we need to, of course, define what kind of clothing is uh, going to land here. And that will be, of course, just the clothing. Ah, why should this game ever do something in the easy way? So that's toys. Legwear, headwear, handwear, footwear. So... Do we have backwear? I don't know. Backpacks, but that's something else. All right, so we're going to allow... Shouldn't there be yarn, leather, cloth, and all qualities. So I hope that this configuration gets the clothing where it's supposed to be. <laughs> we'll see about that. It's, it's always a adventure, you know? So we need to stop this place from picking up all the finished goods, or no, we're, we're going to make it different. This place is going to pick up its goods, its goods from that one. So this is a neat little trick to shove items to a certain direction when you struggle with uh, unified stockpiles and uh, such things. Sometimes you just don't have the capacity of uh, to to manage all that immediately, and this is a nice workaround. I I think. Jeez, we don't even get the most basic things done in time, so at least the lever got uh, built up by now. But uh, all in all, this is a pretty pretty overworked fortress. All in all, but. I didn't expect anything else, in all honesty. But at least we're getting more lavish meals done by now. Lavish meals make it, are making your fortress stupidly valuable, by the way. It's uh, one of the most funny things. There's a lot of memes in the subreddit about that. People selling roasts and meals to horrendous prices. So... I do see a little bit of a shortage of rock salt blocks here. Will this become a problem? After all, I really wonder. <laughs> I mean, I do have still enough territory that I can dig out. I mean, look at these caverns full of magnetite. It's amazing. Love it. So, yeah. The fortress foundations are growing slowly. But we've made a foundation today. I think this is probably the most important part. I am still considering where to draw the walls for this beauty, but I haven't fully made up my mind yet. I only know that this upper level will be also something we're picking up. I can't wait. It's going to be exciting. I mean, I just need more people now. But I think this year, if we are lucky, we're gonna get there. If we are unlucky, we'll have to wait another year. But at the end of the day, there are still enough things that we are gonna get done in the time in between. I have a lot of food by now, and I think it's about time that we set up an office for the bookkeeper as well. So here you see what's happening over the course of the time. Dwarves are racking up junk. So we're going to set up the royal junk processor right away because you know you, you can't start too early with that this is what uh, advanced players would call an atom smasher so the idea is a quite simple one this is a drawbridge we raise it we put garbage down it down below it and then we lower it again and then by the power of dwarven science we make trash disappear it's wonderful now then I really enjoy this place already, and I'm very happy that we're finally making progress with the uh, with, with the big task, you know? I have a goal, I have the ways and means to fulfill it, and we're making progress. What could be better? The only thing that's bothering me a little bit is that 
I don't like the idea of this bridge being in the topmost half. I feel like we would need to have something much bigger, something encompassing the center of the map, some big conver converging thing that connects one continent with another. Ah, well, we'll see about that. And then there's the, the question of pillars. How do we pillar this? Do we pillar this? I mean, a bridge has to rest on pillars, even if technically Dwarven engineering is robust enough to work without pillars, however that works, but you get the idea. I think it would look a lot better without uh, tomfoolery like that, but I'm not sure how well that will work. So let's pull the lever. And this is going to be the garbage dump zone here, Boom. just like that. What's very important also is that we're going to put this as a restricted access area. I think this should work. They dump the stuff now. Now we can give it a try. Hope they land there. And you can then filter from time to time your apartments. There is a couple of ways how you can do it, but uh, yeah, this is a pain that many Dwarf Fortress players know, and migrants have arrived. My friends, I'll leave this episode at this point. We're going to have a look at our new friends at the beginning of the next episode, when we're going to expand this fine fortress even further. I appreciate you guys hanging out. Leave me your comments. A thumbs up would be very appreciated. And of course, consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. That's a wonderful way to support this channel without spending a dime. And it keeps you informed about what this, uh, all the stuff that I publish. That is a good thing to point towards the Let's Play channel link that I have on the topmost comment there. Once it hits 1000 subscribers, there's going to be a lot more Let's Play action on that channel. That all being said, thanks a lot for watching. I hope you have a grand day and see you soon. Thanks for being around until the bitter end. I always appreciate that a lot.